We have a 2004 Jeep Wrangler with the four liter, the six cylinder. And this has got a code P340. And it sometimes it just takes forever to start. It'll crank and crank and crank and crank. Sometimes it'll spit and sputter. Um, sometimes it'll start up pretty quick. Sometimes you're, it's five minutes before it starts. In fact, let's go ahead and crank it. I think, I think I've got that air box out of the way. Let's see, if, let's see what it's going to do right now. And the 340 is the uh, cam uh, sensor fault. Um, and I had my scan tool hooked to this earlier, and it was getting a sync, uh, out of sync and sync uh, reading, uh, just randomly. It'd go out of sync, come into sync, out of sync, uh, come into sync. So let's see if it'll start up. Jeep's got about 250,000 miles. In fact, if you do the key three times, you'll, you can even see that it comes up on the display 340. So, uh, hopefully you saw that. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to change the cam sensor and then we're going to check and make sure that it is synced right. Now the sync, so if you look down here, this is the cam sensor right here. If you look at this kind of a stub shaft, they call this the synchronizer. This is where the, the distributor used to go uh, when these straight sixes had distributors. So that shaft goes all the way down and it's uh, driven uh, I guess off of the crank, uh, obviously off of another gear, and that turns, and that sensor, in fact, I got a new one right here, if you need the part number, PC380, this came from O'Reilly's, get this thing out of here, show you what it looks like, so this is the sensor, three wire, just your simple Hall Effect type sensor, and it's just got a, uh, kind of a wheel in there that's got a gap. And it lets the computer know where the cam is in relation to the crank. And that's how it knows uh, how to fire the coils and uh, all that good stuff. So you'll need a 7 30 seconds socket. Uh, it's probably actually a 5.5 millimeter. But my 5.5 millimeter is only a 12 point. And I prefer to get on stuff like this. The small stuff like this, I prefer a 6 point. So let's go ahead and get this thing unplugged. And earlier I did, I checked them. So you've got a ground, you've got a five, five volt reference, and then you got a signal wire coming from the uh, computer. And uh, I checked all that earlier and it all checked good. So we're just going to I'm going to go with this sensor here and see how that does for us. I mean, that's, that's pretty bad looking in there and I what well, so what I'm doing right here oh, look at that look what I just found that's the magnet that I believe is supposed to be affixed in there and that's what whenever this thing turns
Oh, okay, there you go. So check that out. So here's the old one. This magnet had come apart from this uh, cam sensor. This is supposed to fit down in there, I think, like that. You can see how that one is. And, uh, yeah, the whole piece was completely, completely broke loose. So, that's a pretty good uh, sign that this is probably going to take care of this problem. But, and he also was getting, uh, what was the code? There's all three coils. Uh, all three, I'll, I'll have to put that in the, the description. It was all three coil packs. It was also being faulted for misfire well uh, this probably will cause that that same problem um also don't tighten these up real tight otherwise you can crack it um yeah this this will probably cause this is probably what was causing the coil packs uh to set codes i just i had a hard time believing that all three coil packs were bad so, okay, let's see if this thing will start up. I bet it does. Um, no. That 5 sixteenths was for the uh, that air box. But yeah, 730, 732nd, 6 point is what I used on the... Uh, sensor. That's much better. Now, you'll probably be fine leaving it at that, but if you've got a scan tool, you really want to check and make sure that it's going to show in sync. Uh, I'll show you what I mean here. Go to history. Sorry for that glare. That's that's probably good. Guess I'd have the key on. Hit diagnosis, control unit. Nope. Too fast there. We'll go powertrain. ECM. Uh, first thing I want to do is clear the code. I'll show you the code. See if it's still there. No cam signal at PCM. 340. Hopefully you can see that. We're going to hit erase. It would, uh, and I had erased it earlier, and before I even had it out of the driveway, it came back. Okay, so it should be code free. We'll just do a quick double check. And then, uh, if you go here to this set synchronization signal, this is where if you had to adjust that synchronizer by loosening that lockdown bolt and turning it. Kind of the way we used to have to set the timing on cars, we'd have to use a timing light and then turn the distributor. This is doing. This is taking place of the timing light. So we're going to start the engine up. And what this is going to do is the the sync spec is zero. That's where it wants to be. The distributor setting or the synchronizer setting is sitting right around six, seven, eight degrees. So current synchronization status is in range. I think 10 degrees is the limit. Uh, I don't know if that's plus or minus 10 degrees. Uh, so since it's saying it's in range, we're gonna call that good. 
I could actually, if I wanted to get it closer, just break that bolt loose and turn it until the distributor settings showed zero or fluctuated, you know, around zero to minus one, minus two to positive one or two. And uh, that would have actually, that would actually be a little closer. But right here, that's about, uh, that's about a, I don't know, six or seven degree advance on the synchronization. Anyway, uh, I'll show you what I mean. If you need to adjust that. So earlier it was fluctuating. It would go in sync and out of sync. And whenever it would go out of sync, that number would be, let me turn this, uh, let me turn this off. I don't need it running from what I'm about to show you. When it would go out of sync, that number would be around uh, 13, 14, 15. And then it would come back down and go into sync, but it would be uh, under 10. And that's it, it seems like that's when it was happy, was when it was under 10. But this is the bolt that you would loosen off and you would just rotate this slightly to, uh, to get that as close to zero as you can. And like I said, I believe anything uh, from zero to positive 10 or zero to negative 10 is considered within, uh, within range. Um, anyway, so that fixed this problem. Cam sensor prevent it, preventing it from starting, although sometimes it would eventually start. So that's all there is to it. Very quick and easy cam sensor to change. You guys take care.